Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to uh, discuss the angular momentum of a rotating body. So what we're looking at, you know, imagine this big rock shaped geometry here that is free to rotate about this uh, axis right here that I've drawn in pink. Let's imagine it's rotating uh, counterclockwise with an angular velocity omega. Again, this angular velocity being the rate of uh, rotation. So if I pick like a spot on the body, like this spot right here, this is supposed to represent just a small chunk of mass here. That chunk of mass would be uh, moving along this circular path. I'm going to go ahead and give that mass a name. I'm going to call it uh, m sub i here. Right? And m sub i is just a small piece of, of uh, the mass of this object. And this object has a linear momentum. And that linear momentum would be in the direction of the velocity. At the instant shown, the velocity vector would be tangent to the curve here. So the linear momentum of this particle would point in this direction, in the direction of the velocity. And that momentum vector would equal the mass, which I'm going to call m sub i, and uh, times its velocity, which I'm going to call v sub i. Now again, the reason I'm putting i's on this is because you got to think of this body as the sum of a bunch of little masses. You have to imagine breaking it up into hundreds or even thousands or potentially millions of little pieces. The total mass of the system would be the sum of all the little masses. So the m sub i is just kind of an arbitrary or generic way of saying the mass of one of these little pieces. Now, different pieces uh, depending on where you're at on this body, the velocities will be different. That's why that that's why I've got an eye on this as well, because the velocity is going to depend on where I'm at. You know, mass here versus here versus here will all be moving at different velocities. Right. <clears throat> now, this linear momentum can be turned into an angular momentum by multiplying by this distance, the perpendicular distance. from this axis to the uh, momentum vector. Right. So I'm going to call this uh, r sub i. The reason I'm tacking an i on that is that distance is going to depend on where you're at on the body. If I move over to here, whoops, pardon me. I'm going to have to uh, pause this for a moment. Sorry about that. So where was I? Um, Linear momentum of this piece m sub i is equal to m sub i v sub i. If we multiply that by r sub i, oops, and I'll go ahead and do that in black, we would have what I would call maybe l sub i, l being, representing the angular momentum of this small mass. Now, the angular momentum is uh, counterclockwise, or in a standard XYZ coordinate system, we might call it the plus K direction. I'm just going to say counterclockwise, which is good enough. The total angular momentum we would get by adding up the angular momentums of every mass on this object. So that's going to equal the sum of all the m sub i, v sub i, r sub i terms from i equals, let's say, 1 to n. Now, <clears throat> the v's, these guys, they depend on where you're at, but the angular velocities don't. At any given point, remember, the velocity, I'm going to call it v sub i, is going to equal r sub i times the angular velocity. You notice I didn't bother tacking an i on that, and the reason I didn't bother tacking an i on that is because all points on this body have the same angular velocity. I'm sorry, no, I'm not sorry, <laughs> that's correct. All points on this object have the same angular velocity. So we could put an eye on it, but we really don't have to because basically it's a constant for this problem. So our total angular momentum we can write as the sum from i equals 1 to n, n being however many particles we decide to break this into, of m sub i. And where I've got this v sub i, I'm going to go ahead and put r sub i times omega, the angular velocity. Then we've got another r sub i here. Now, if you look at this sum carefully, if I group anything that's got an i on it, this is now going to read the sum from i equals 1 to n of m sub i r sub i squared, and I'm going to kind of put that in parentheses, times the angular velocity. Hopefully now, hopefully if you're watching this video, you recognize this term. 
The term MR squared gives what's called the moment of inertia of the system. The M sub i, R sub i squared would be the moment of inertia of this point mass, or very, very small mass, about this axis. If we summed up all the m sub i r sub i squareds over the entire body, we're calculating what is called the moment of inertia of the body. Most books use the letter i to represent that. And then times our angular velocity. So the total angular momentum, and again this t is for total, of a rotating body can be expressed as the angular, um, I'm sorry, as the moment of inertia of the body times the uh, rotation rate, or the angular velocity vector. So, um, again, the purpose of this video is just to describe how to uh, calculate the moment of inertia of, uh, or I'm sorry, the angular momentum of a rotating body. This is how it's calculated. It's coming from starting with this, which represents the angular momentum of a small piece of mass on the body, and then summing those all up over the entire object. Hope this video helps describe what or how to calculate the angular momentum of a uh, rigid body rotating about an axis. Have a great day.